Welcome back everyone uh, to my series tutorials about Rust uh, and today we're going to be discussing variables. Now in other languages you may know them as just variables uh, but in Rust it's actually called variable bindings and because they bind types so you can bind a string, bind an integer, bind a boolean to a variable. So what do I mean by that? Well let me show you how variables work in Rust right now. Okay so I'm going to make a new project so I'm going to go to my projects folder so cd projects and I'm going to make cargo new and I'm gonna call this project variables okay and uh, that okay okay so let's go to our project folder I just want to make sure it works so cargo run okay so it works so I'm gonna go to this project right now and uh, I'm going to show you what I mean by how variables work here. Okay, so we have this here. Let me initialize. So the way you initialize a variable in Rust is you say let and your variable name. So I'm going to call this uh, name and I'm going to call this Rust. Okay, so <laughs> you can initialize variables like that. In fact, Rust is has a feature basically called type inference. And what type inference does is that it defines your variables when you type them without actually explicitly saying what they are so you don't have to say string name equals rust or or you know int x equals 5 you can just say let name equals rust let x equals you know 5 whoops 5 so we'll know that x is 5 if you want to explicitly say what it is then you can do that too I can come here and say x i32 and what i32 means is it's a signed 32-bit integer I can make this 8-bit integer 16-bit integer or I can make a 64-bit integer depending on what I want and depending on what I want to use and the i basically stands for signed you can do unsigned integers as well so in this case x is basically an unsigned 32-bit integer however if you don't specify anything then uh, you, you know correct me if I'm wrong but for those veterans in Rust uh, then X is automatically equal to this that's what this line means right here if we do unsigned uh, integer so even if we delete this it would still be the same as this okay so th these both mo mean the same thing alright so that's it for the variables in fact you can come here and say let y equals true and again it will automatically know that y is a boolean okay and in fact we can compile this and run it we can say print ln and the way you print variables is similar as to how you print uh, you know use printf in Java I guess so you can say you know in Java you say percent %d or percent %s or percent %f and then you separate your variables by this comma right here uh, in Rust you only have to use curly braces you don't have to specify percent %d or percent %s so I can say you know uh, name is curly braces and I can say name okay so that's our variable and I can say you know x is uh, equal to brace, curly braces again and in here I can come and say X and again I can say uh, Y is and curly braces again and again Y okay so this hopefully will print name is rust X is 5 Y is true okay so let's run this program cargo run whoops what happened targets just arguments Start. Uh, I think I goofed up somewhere. Hold on. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> it was a comma. My bad. So again, let's run this, and it works. So it says here, name is Rust. X is equal to five, and Y is equal to true, or Y is true. And again, we didn't have to specify what type of variables they were. In fact, I could have came here and said, well, this is a boolean or bool sorry my bad so I can say why is a boolean equal to true but you don't have to do that it already knows what you want 
okay so that's how you declare variables and run them uh, what about the state of the variables you know in other languages you can easily come in here and say well you know suppose x is equal to 5 right and I want to come and say and say well x is equal to 6 can we do that in rust well no we can't why because in rust when you say let x equal to 5 x will be equal to 5 forever it's an immutable object which means you cannot change the state of x x is basically a final integer by default okay so if I try to compile this not even run it just just compile it it will actually give me a compilation error and it will say well wait a second x is immutable and then you're here trying to reassign it into 6 you can't do that so we can't do that on rust what you can do however if you want to change the value of x which I don't recommend uh, it's always good to have immutable objects uh, if you want to change it then you can say let mute x equals 5 and what this will do is basically say x is mutable aka x can be changed so x is equal to 6 and in fact if we try to print x this time it will actually print 6 and it will actually let us run the program so as you can see here it prints 6 to the screen now I don't know if you can see this properly I'm going to try to make this even bigger but uh, profile preferences okay oh oopsie daisy okay now it became even worse uh, 15 okay okay so prints number six so that's what mutable and immutable mean all right we can change the value now what about rebinding you can actually rebind values without being mutable so I can delete this and say let x equal to 10 what is this gonna print what do you think it's gonna print is it gonna print 5 or is it gonna print 10 well rust will actually print whatever is the latest so because let x equals 10 is my latest statement it will actually print 10 so if I go print ln and go x it will actually print 10 right here alright that's because you can actually uh, rebind variables you can reinitialize variables but you cannot change their state okay so these are two different concepts you can say let x equals 10 let x equal 50 but you can come in and say x is equal to 50 that's two different things alright now the next thing I want to talk about is attribute shadowing or the you know the scope or life of the variable where does it live so for example if I have something like let x is equal to 5 right and I make new curly braces this is a new scope okay so automatically x is a class member it's available to the entire class however if I come here and say let y equal to 10 and say print ln okay x and x is you know curly braces and y is curly braces again and I say x y this is completely acceptable this will run okay so if I run this x is 5 and y is 10 it runs perfectly however look what happens when I go outside so let me copy this again and if I go here and try to do the same thing look what happens it actually gives me a runtime error why is that well we declared y equals 10 in these two brackets and that is the only time we can use y for the entire you know class we can come here and say let y equals 50 however and because y is outside these braces this statement will work perfectly in fact this will print x is 5 and y is 50 so let's run it again and bam 
it will actually work this time and it will not give us a compilation error. Why? Because now Y is in the scope of our class. While in here it was in the scope of the braces, so we couldn't use it outside the braces. But you can use a variable that is outside the braces in the braces. So we can use X in here, but you can't use Y in the outside. You have to declare it again to another variable. Okay? So that's how attributes and shadowing work. Uh, so that's for the attributes and shadowing. What happens to what was I going to oh for a second <laughs> I forgot what I was going to talk about okay so we have x equal to 5 can you change the type of a variable and the answer is yes you can so in here we said x is equal to 5 we can come back and say let x is equal to you know rust at first x was an integer a 32-bit integer and now x is basically a string so we change the type so if I come here and say print ln and I say print x it will actually print rust okay so <laughs> this that's how it works in rust um, you can do whatever you want as long as you reinitialize the variable if I just say x is equal to rust again this is gonna give me a compilation error so that's how Rust is different than uh, Java. In fact, uh, later on, we're going to cover something called patterns. And you can initialize variables like this. So I can go let a b equals 1, 2. And believe it or not, a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2. And we can try this. Look. So A is and B is A, B. And this will work. Okay, so A is 1 and B is 2. So there's multiple ways to declare variables in Rust. Uh, but this is just one of the simplest ways to do so. Later on, this is, belongs to a pattern, by the way. We're going to cover pattern in more uh, later tutorials. But for now, I just wanted to get get you guys the idea of variables and how do you deal with them in Rust and how different they are from other programming languages. Uh, so that's it for this tutorial and uh, thanks for watching guys. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video if you find it helpful and uh, I'll see you next time.